Hi guys and girls, it's Mrs. T. This is a video to review percent composition of hydrates, which is AIM number five. Uh, you can see some of these questions on your AIM sheet. You should also have a calculator, a reference table, and something to write with. If at any point I'm going too fast on the video, you can hit pause and catch up on the math, rewind, re-listen, um, and we're just gonna go over a few of the questions from the AIM sheet today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mrs. T. I'm a chemistry teacher at Calhoun High School in Merrick, New York. Hopefully this will be helpful for you. So the first kind of question you might see would just be a straight question about percent composition from a name or a formula. And before we can find the percent composition or percentage of water found in this formula, we need to find the formula that we're working with first. So remember, when we have um, a formula like this, this is copper 2 sulfate, this 2 is the oxidation number of the element that comes before it. So we are going to do Cu plus 2. Remember that this ends in 8, so it's on table E. And sulfate is the polyatomic ion SO4 with a minus 2 charge. Because this is an ionic compound, we're going to crisscross and drop the signs. But because the charges are equal and opposite, they will cancel out. So the result is just going to be Cu SO4. Now because there is a hydrate, we're going to put a dot to say that these waters are connected. And remember that the prefix penta means 5. So that means that this copper sulfate unit has five water molecules attached to it. So copper sulfate pentahydrate is going to have the formula CuSO4.5H2O. And that dot just means that those five water molecules are connected. To find the gram formula mass, we're going to do Cu times 1. S times 1, O times 4, the same way we did for the other gram formula masses. Oops, and I forgot about the water. And then we're going to add water. Sorry about that. We're going to add water and we're going to multiply by the coefficient of 5. Now over here off to the side, H times 2 is 2.0, O times 1 is 16.0, so water is always going to be 18 grams equals 1 mole, so that's what we're going to use down here. For the copper, the sulfur, and the oxygen, we're going to look those up on the table, and in our class we always rounded to the 10th. So these numbers rounded to the 10th and then multiplied by their subscripts are here. And then water, 90.0. When I add all of this together for copper sulfate pentahydrate, the gram formula mass is 249.6 grams equals one mole. To do the percentage of water, I'm just going to do the same thing I did for other percent composition problems, which is do the part over the whole times 100. And so for this formula, the percentage of water equals 36 point percent when I plug it all into the calculator. You might see a question done a little bit differently or asked a little bit differently. Instead of giving you the formula, they might just say that you have a 2.5 gram sample of the hydrate Remember that hydrate is the one that's wet, and they might tell you that after they heated it, this is how much anhydrous there was, which is the dry. So we're going to do the 2.5 grams of wet minus 1.7 grams of dry to get our water. And in problems like this, percent equals water over wet times 100. So we're going to do 0.8 grams over 2.5 grams times 100. And my percentage of water came out to 0.32%.
I'm sorry, came out to 32%. I forgot to multiply by 100. So that came out to 32%. So 0.8 divided by 2.5 times 100 gave us 32% of water. And then finally, the third way that you might see a hydrate question, they might talk to you about a crucible. This is a crucible, it's the container. They rem remember that the hydrate might have a color. Once it's dry or anhydrous, we usually get it to be like a grayish or a no color. And then if we add water again, we can get that color back. And that's because this right here has copper in it, which is a transition metal. And remember that transition metals make colorful ions when in solution. So when they have the water as part of their crystal structure, we see the color. Once we boil that water off by heating it over a, over a burner, that color goes away and we see that grayish whitish color. So if we're looking at it, the mass of the crucible, again, the crucible is just the container. And then the crucible top and the crystals, this would be the wet salt with blue. In order to get the mass of just the hydrate, we're going to subtract. And if we want to know just the mass of the hydrate, 15.2 by minus 9.2 gives us the mass of the hydrate. Then we're going to heat it and weigh it at different intervals until finally we get no more change of mass, or if we go a little bit change, a little bit of change of mass, we're usually going to use the smallest mass of the of the ones given to us. And this is the dry salt plus the crucible plus the cover. So we have to subtract the mass of the crucible and the top to get the anhydrous dry salt. Okay, so what we have, we have our mass of our hydrate and we have our mass of our dry salt. Remember, we have to do wet minus dry to get water. The wet was the 6.0 grams, the 3.3 grams was the dry. That means that we have 2.7 grams of water. And then finally, we have to do percent. We have to do the water over wet times 100. When we do 2.7 divided by 6 times 100, we get that this was 45% by mass of water. And this was done experimentally instead of being done just by using the formula. So hopefully this helped. If you have any other questions, please come down to extra help. Um, you can certainly ask me questions in class about this as well. You can always rewind, you can pause, you can rewatch, and hopefully you're having a good day. Bye.